Well, since we last visited together, we've made a lot of progress. Take a look and see what we've done. In each of the corners back here, we've placed a frame that you can see. And I'm going to explain to you what these frames do and why they're put in here. Basically, they're called Helmholtz resonators. Uh, and I'm going to explain that to you. So let's start with why we would even want to put a resonator into um, our sound room. When we ran an analysis of the sound room's dimensions, which are 22.8 by uh, long, 15 feet wide, nine and a half foot tall, we found that there were what we call eigenmodes that are pressure areas, high pressure areas at certain frequencies that cause the room to amplify, if you will, or exaggerates, probably a better word, various frequencies. And you've probably heard rooms that do this before, um, where you play a bass frequency and it howls at, at these frequencies. And then at some, you have suckouts and you have kind of overblown frequencies. With a system like the IRS, where you have some serious woofer power going on here, we're going to be very concerned with getting rid of these high pressure areas at specific frequencies. And what we found using, um, oh, several, they're, they're very easy online calculators that you just put in the room dimensions and it shows you what the, the eigenmodes are going to be. We found that the biggest areas of concern were 22 to 20, uh, no, I'm sorry, 25 hertz and 40 hertz, 37 hertz. So those two areas, plus 60, but the biggest areas of concern were 25 hertz and 37 hertz. Now those areas are going to really have a lot of energy. So we need to kind of calm those areas down. One of the things that people could do is they build what we call base traps. And we had talked about that at first, that we were going to build these corner base traps and put a tube going up into the ceiling and kind of vent out that with a lot of absorptive material behind here. Well, that was a great idea, but when we started really examining what it is we were trying to accomplish, we realized that a corner trap like that is what I have to term broadband coverage. So it's going to reduce the base over a large range of frequencies in the corners, and we don't really want to do that. All we want to do is even out the responses that are going like this, the, the, the boominess part of the room. To do that, we need a tuned filter. Okay, so what's a tuned filter? You might be familiar with speakers, and I've written about these before, that have ports. A port is a woofer or, uh, or a speaker that has a hole inside of it, and I'm sure you've seen ports. I'll try and put up a little video example here of a port. This is a, a big port. These were, in fact, the, the things we were going to try and put up into the ceiling. It works with something called a Helmholtz resonator. Now, the Helmholtz resonator was invented in the late 1800s by a guy named, I think his name was Hermann Helmholtz. And what he discovered was when you force air over a small necked area into a larger chamber, you set up a resonance that sounds like it's actually amplifying it. Examples of that might be a whistle. A whistle is a Helmholtz resonator. A trombone is, is somewhat of one that's kind of variable. And, and this, now let's see if I can do this. Well, <laughs> not a good blower of wishbone salad dressing, but you, you know when you blow over a Coke bottle. That's a Helmholtz resonator. Now the way that works is actually pretty simple. There's a very small neck, so let, let's look at our, our, our salad dressing here, okay? So take a look. You've got a large chamber, and you've got a small neck. When I blow over this chamber, 
I am sending pressurized air down into the small neck of this and it goes into this cavity. When it does that, the air acts as a spring. So what you're doing is actually pressurizing the air inside of here and then once this gets pressurized, like bending or forcing a spring together, it then comes out and the inertia of the compressed air leaving through this neck creates a bit of a vacuum and the process repeats and then it sucks it back in. The inertia of that creates more pressure and you get this bouncing oscillation that makes for the Coke bottle sound as you are probably familiar with as a kid. A port in a speaker works exactly the same way. What you're doing in a port in a speaker is at a certain frequency depending on the size of that neck, the length of that tube of the port, you set up a resonance inside of the speaker and out from the port comes greater sound. Now we usually use that in a port to amplify or to, to give you more bass at a frequency that the woofer itself can't provide. But what if you do the opposite? What if you build a large cavity and you put a small port into it inside of the room that is creating the pressure? Well then the opposite happens. If you dissipate the energy coming into it with damping material. So let me explain how that works. Imagine that this room is a box. Let's call it a speaker box. And let's imagine that I put a, a hole. Let's just say I put, I do this. I'm going to put a hole. This, this is just for purposes. Mm, don't you whack me. I take that and close everything else off, fill this with damping material. The size of that hole, the length of that tube, determine what frequencies are actually going to come into my chamber. When those frequencies come into the chamber, it compresses the air inside but and acts just like a Helmholtz resonator. But I've filled this with absorptive material. So what that does is it kind of damps the spring and the energy that comes in there is, is damped out and reduced. So instead of an empty chamber, if I did this, this thing would howl uh, at the frequencies and actually make it worse. But if I damp inside of here, it actually takes the peak and brings it down. There's a number of online calculators that show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is in each of these corners, because we want to get rid of the 25 hertz up here, in each of these corners we're going to drywall this up, fill it full of the appropriate amount of deadening material, and we're going to make, we need about a hundred square inches, right? So up here we're going to make a couple of openings and we're going to fill them with little squares, little two by two squares that'll be holes. And those squares are going to equal about 100, 120 inches of surface area at exactly the right depth, which is about two inches in our case to get rid of this 25 hertz. Then once that is built and we actually put the speakers in here, we'll run a sweep tone on it, find out how well we did, and by filling up the various holes up here, we can plug them or open them up we will make a variable Helmholtz resonator that we can then tune the frequency to get those modes out. Now we also have other modes. Th those, by the way, are all in the corners. If you look at where that 25 hertz is building up, it's all in the corners. The 37 hertz that we have are going down the side walls. So down the middle here, I've got a nice clear area in our room. But along the sides, we have buildup of 37 hertz. So we also have this nice ceiling and inside the ceiling we have rafters that are about 12 inch on center filled with insulation and about six inches deep. By simply calculating what size tube and what size opening we can punch holes in the ceiling 
and use this cavity as a Helmholtz resonator tuned to 37 hertz. And we'll put those at various places along the ceiling to create that and, and get rid of the side modes. So that's basically the game plan of how we're going to start to get this room tamed down so we have a very even frequency response. So that's your update on what we're doing. That's how a Helmholtz resonator works. And I'll keep you informed. Thanks for watching.